Okay, so I wanted to share a gambling addiction story today about superstitions. Now, if you're someone that's been to a casino or who gambles regularly, you've probably met someone or, or know someone that believes in superstitions, whether they have some type of special token in their pocket, a good luck charm, a four leaf clover, or they're just wearing their lucky socks. Whatever there is, there are people out there who believe in this sort of stuff and that carrying one of these good luck charms or believing in superstitions will somehow affect the mathematical outcome of a casino game. And obviously if you're a rational thinking person, you know that this isn't true. Now, this is a kind of devastating topic to talk about because I've seen so many people lose an incredible amount of money at the casino just because they thought it was their lucky day or they had their magical good luck charm on them. And so it gave them this irrational confidence to bet an extreme amount of money that they couldn't afford to bet. And I saw this from a person that I used to see at the casino every single day. Now, in my past, I used to wait for the bus. I think it would cost like $5 or so, and I would get the bus to go to the casino, and there would pretty much be the exact same regulars on this bus every single day. And the majority of them were retired, older people, you know, which is fine. But going to the casino on a Tuesday morning, for example, you're pretty much with a group of human beings who are degenerates like how I was. And a vast majority of them have these strange beliefs and superstitions. And the funny thing about this story was that there was this one guy on the bus and we used, to, we used to call him Ace King and I'll explain the reasoning for this nickname. But he would always play poker for a couple hours every single day then he would go off and I think he'd play slots or something like that to end his night. And I would catch the same bus with him going up in the morning and then I'd catch the same bus, not every day, but usually around like 2 a.m. going back home. So he was in the trenches, just like me, gambling all his money away. And his game of choice was No Limit Hold'em, so poker, in the poker room, which is what I played. And every once in a while, we would play together at the same table. And I developed this nickname for him called Ace King because he had this strange superstition or fascination with the hand ace king in in poker now normally ace king is one of the strongest hands you can have and the reason for this is because if you're holding ace king and say an ace comes on the flop the majority of people will also play ace queen ace jack ace 10 so you're obviously beating them with your second kicker card the king it, it's pretty basic and these are sort of like the fundamentals of, of poker when you start off that ace king is a very strong hand and it will generally win you a good amount of money however this dude and we'll call him Mr. Ace King. He had this very strange idea that that poker hand Ace King was cursed for him. And he had this belief that everyone else would win money with it, but whenever he got it, someone would always outdraw him or catch some miracle card on the river or beat the odds and he would just lose money. And so there was always this negativity, this like dark cloud that always followed this guy around. And I really started to pick up on this superstition that he had during this one session where he was sitting directly on my left. And normally at a poker table, you know, in between hands, it gets kind of boring. So you'll chat with your neighbor, you maybe talk to the guys about like the hockey game or basketball game or whatever that's going on in the world. I remember I got into a conversation with him and he started cursing the hand ace king. And I was sort of laughing and I was like, oh yeah, I just thought he was joking but he honestly had this bizarre superstition that the hand was cursed. He told me that it was the, one of the worst hands in poker. It looks good, but it kills you every time and it's a cursed hand. And I was like, okay, well, that's a kind of a crazy thing to say. You believe two cards in a deck are, are cursed? Now that, that seems very strange. Now, the funny thing about this story is that I played with this guy for a couple years and over the course of that time where we played together, I actually saw him lose a vast majority of his money with this hand, Ace King. And it sort of, it sort of blew me away and I started to internalize this idea and this concept that he, have, he had of this superstition of this cursed hand and that this is what's causing him to lose money. But what actually happened in these situations was that whenever he got the hand, Ace King, for example. Usually 
if you don't pair the ace or the king on the board or you, you, you improve the hand, generally it's e pretty easy to throw it away. Like if you have ace king and the, and the board comes queen seven four, you know, you still have ace high. You have no pair. You can't make a straight. You know, if, it, if the suits are all different, you're probably not making a, f a flush. So it's pretty easy to, to just throw your hand away and fold it. But what I noticed with this guy was that he developed this complex where he became incredibly stubborn with his hand. And so even when there was a spot where it was quite obvious that he should fold and throw his hand away, he would still continue to put money in the pot. He would still call bets. He would still bet. He'd still try to get all the way to the turn and river cards, which is the last two cards of the deck, and try to just turn his ace king into some type of hand. More often than not, when you do this, you're going to lose money. And whenever he played a pot and he would show ace king, he always would grab the cards, he'd throw it on the table, he'd make a fist and he'd slam the table and he'd curse the hand ace king. I was trying really hard not to laugh because I thought this was pretty comical in the moment. I'm like, wow, this guy's a very strange superstition or very weird belief. But what sort of escalated this issue for him is that there would be other hands where he would have, say, two jacks, two queens, ace queen, and someone else would have ace king and they would end up beating him. And whenever they would show him ace king and they would win money, it would just put him in a rage. It would put him in a fit and he'd just go mad. This is where believing in superstitions can really affect your decision making. He had this idea that rooted deep in his mind that this hand was out to get him. He had this belief that it was cursed, that it didn't matter what he did, he was going to lose money. He lost money with it while he saw everyone else win money. And what this did was it affected the way he played the game. It affected his decision making. And at the end of the day, the game of poker is a game of just decisions. It's who can make the best decisions and make the least amount of mistakes. That's generally how you win in poker. Over the year, as the years went by, I used to see this guy lose hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single day and it was interesting because for most of the sessions he played okay he wasn't like a terrible player who was throwing his money away he was actually pretty careful he we, we, we would call him what's known as a tight player someone who didn't play many hands and he'd wait for you know two good hole cards and when he put money in you knew he that his starting hand was pretty good it was half decent he wasn't in there, you know, splashing the pot, throwing, a money, throwing money around and gambling. He wasn't that type of guy. You know, we called him someone that was very tight and, and conservative. But whenever he got into a situation that where he had ace king or someone else showed him ace king, it always just set him off and put him into a rage. And he would start yelling at the dealer and talk to the other players at the table and be like, hey, look, see this hand is cursed. I always lose with it. You guys always win. And again, he would make a fist and slam the table and curse ace king. And so this is where this nickname came for this guy. And I'll, I'll always remember him as, as ace king because whenever I go to the casino with my friends, I tell them about this guy. And then we'd sometimes see him on the bus. They'd be like, oh, you know, th there's Ace King, there's Ace King. And they'd be like, well, what do you mean? Why do you call him Ace King? And so I, I would tell them this story about how, for whatever reason, he was so unlucky with this hand. But it was the fact that the belief in his superstition, it infected the way his mind worked. It affected the way he was able to control his emotions. And once you lose control of your emotions at the casino, it's one of the darkest and worst things that you can be or where you can be in. If you get angry and you start to blame the dealer or you blame Lady Luck or you blame the poker gods or you blame whatever external factor is causing you to lose money. As soon as you get into that state of mind, it will only perpetuate your losses. Because even when you start with sound mind, you're in a good place, you're still set up to lose. The casino is always going to win. And if you continue playing with a negative mindset, where you think that everyone else is out to get you, when you feel like you're unlucky, when you, you believe in all these very strange superstitions, and you let that affect your judgment in the moment, it can cause you to lose the house. You know, I've seen people blow their mortgages at the casino, lose their life savings, gamble away their kids' university funds. And it, it's, it's really sad in the moment because a lot of these people they they're just sick and 
it's this is a hard thing to say because I never really had any superstitions, but I was pretty much a degenerate just like them. I was in the trenches, you know, gambling away just like all these other people. However, I think this story is incredibly important because if you're someone who believes in chance or luck or superstitions rather than cause and effect, it can be a huge detriment to your life. So hopefully you enjoyed this gambling addiction story. And if you missed the last one where I talked about my experience with bad beat jackpots, you can watch that right here.